Hi guys, this is JasonOld.com and I'm here with the unboxing of the Huawei Mate 50 Pro. So it's finally available in Europe and we have it here for an unboxing and more details compared to the last hands-on. Okay, so let's get things going. It's been two years since the Huawei Mate 40 Pro and here we have it in October 2022. It keeps the notch at the front side, gets this beautiful uh, orange hue. And this is the vegan leather version of the phone, which comes with a few extras like the Kunlun glass protection, extra storage and improved depth resistance. Now the official price tag should be around $1,200. This is our very first contact with the Emotion UI 13 and at the same time uh, with a variable aperture phone. We haven't seen one in a while. Uh, from what I remember, the Galaxy S9 inaugurated that on uh, modern smartphones. There was also a Nokia phone back in the day, which had a similar feature. Okay, so it's an unboxing, so let's see what's inside the box. By the way, aside from this version, there is also a black one and from what I know, also a silver one. Now, in the box we have here, you can find the key used to access the card slots and also the nano memory. Uh, Huawei is sticking with that standard nano memory card slot, just like Sony did with their very own card on the PlayStation Vita and a few of the older phones back in the day. They didn't like micro SD, so they used their own format. And this is the case you're getting, transparent, flexible and with a large cutout. This cutout has become a bit of a trademark for the Mate phones like the Mate 30 Pro, Mate 40 Pro and the, now the Mate 50 Pro. This time in, uh, I would say, less elegant manner the lenses have become bigger okay so in the box we find this charger which is a 66 watt charger with an usb a connector and by the way the mate 40 pro inaugurated this type of charging no other huawei phone had had it before it here you can see the cable going from usb c to usb a and i think we're about done our unit here doesn't have a manual but uh, we may have a pre-production version to blame for that. I'm guessing that yours should come with a manual. Now, for those of you wondering, uh, the Kunlun glass is a bit of a mystery for everyone. Even, even if you ask the people at Huawei, uh, they'll be hesitant to tell you if it's stronger than Gorilla Glass. They claim it is. And I've seen a viral video of the Kunlun glass, which protects the screen, breaking nuts. Yes, nuts. Okay, so let's talk about the phone uh, and see what we're dealing with here. Let's turn down the brightness a little bit. Okay, that's more like it. So first things first, it's a bit less wide than the predecessor and a bit easier to handle. The grip is improved on account of the fake leather backside. And I'm shocked to see that the camera doesn't protrude even though it has a periscope mechanism here. We have a metal frame here and a, a metal frame here and a weight of around 200 grams. Now, things worth mentioning. It has IP68 certification and it can be dunked in up to 6 meters of water for this version, less meters for the black one with glass on the back side. Uh, it, it's gently curved on the back side and also gently curved on the front side, not as much as the Mate 40 Pro, which became slippery on account of those curves. And the metal frame which goes all the way around it is very solid and you can grip it tight once handling the phone. Now, as you can see, the notch isn't gone, even though Apple replaced it already with a dynamic island, and we may see that happening on future Huawei phones. The screen I'm using right now, this one is an OLED, it's a 6.74 inch panel, which is not exactly a drop from the predecessor 6.76 inches. Uh, they got rid of the peeled cutout, which the Mate 40 Pro had, and went back to the notch, which was present on the Mate 30 Pro, and Mate 20 Pro. Now, aside from that, um, I should also mention that this uh, 6.74 inch OLED screen has a 120 Hz refresh rate, and uh, it has a resolution which is obviously atypical, 2616 over uh, 1232 pixels, and uh, also it promises up to 700 lux, no, excuse me, um, up to 1000 nits in brightness. Here you can see the settings for the refresh rate. And if you want to talk about the CPU, we have an app for that, which is here and confirms that we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 4G chip. 4G for obvious reasons, the limitations imposed to Huawei by the US government. It's accompanied by 8 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, UFS 3.1, plus the whole nano memory thing. 
Now, if you want battery, we have a 4,700 mAh unit, unit inside with 66 watts, watts fast charging, 50 watts wireless charging, and 5 watts reverse charging. You can put another device here and it will juice it up. Just so you know, the Mate 40 Pro before it had a 4,400 mAh battery, so a bit smaller. Now, uh, in China, where this device is sold, you may be able to find an extra feature which is not available in Europe. Basically, it has satellite communication, so that's pretty nice to see. Not just on the iPhone, but also on the Mate 50 Pro. However, once again, not in Europe. The fingerprint scanner is of the optical variety. It's placed here, as you can see for yourself, and let's see if there's any point of using it, considering I also have the face unlock setup. And with that extra sensor here at the top side, I'm not wondering if it's efficient or not, because it actually is. When it comes to connectivity, we're limited to just 4G, for obvious reasons. We have an infrared emitter here at the top side. There's USB-C 3.1 at the bottom of the port. And uh, we also have Bluetooth 5.2, NFC and Wi-Fi 6. Apparently, the port here outputs video signal. Uh, there are also stereo speakers, the one at the bottom. And at the top side, we're using the earpiece, albeit it's a pretty small one in this punch hole, to be honest. Finally, we have reached the cameras. Now, when we're talking about the cameras, I can use a wider background to show you that there are two sensors here. There is a 13 megapixel camera and a time of flight 3D sensor, and I'm happy to inform you, we have here 4K 60 frames per second selfie capture. And uh, an interesting fact about the main camera, excuse me, the main front camera, is that it starts off with an ultra-wide setup, as you can see for yourself, the angle is wider than expected for a regular flagship selfie camera. Well, to be honest, if you've seen the Huawei Nova 10 Pro, you may have come to expect wider cameras from Huawei at the front side. We're done with the front, we'll go to the back, we have a lot of talking to do here. You can see that there are four sensors, where actually this one is a triple camera with an extra sensor for the whole laser focus thing. The main sensor is a 50 megapixel one with a Sony sensor, uh, RYYB color filter, with the two Ys being yellow. And uh, we have here a variable aperture, have from f1.4 to f4.0. This is a physical aperture, there's also the virtual aperture, it goes up to f16. We also have phase detection autofocus and optical image stabilization. There are 10 aperture values to play with, 4 physical and 6 virtual. And um, aside from that, I should probably mention that um, um, higher aperture is f1.4, catches more light, lets you do the whole pretty bokeh thing and take brighter shots at night. And the lower aperture is f16, less light but more clarity. Next up, we have a 64 megapixel camera, which is this one here, is the periscope telephoto with 3.5x optical zoom. And we also have a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera with autofocus, which means you can take macros with it. This baby does 4K capture at 60 frames per second. And we forgot to mention the LED flash here, which seems to be a dual -led, dual tone setup. There are more sensors here. I'm guessing this is a microphone and these to help with the color as well as this one here. Now, uh, things to play with, well, there's plenty. We have the more section here with monochrome, time-lapse, super macro, story, creator, panorama, light painting, documents, high-res, multicam, which is a new thing. You can actually couple a bunch of devices together to get filming from a variety of angles, which is something cool for videographers. Slow-mo, AR lens, stickers, dual view and snapshot while the pro mode lets you get in touch with those apertures I just mentioned. So uh, you can go from f.4 to f4, as you can see for yourself here. There are various others value to play with, values to play with. This is the video area where you can find three color profiles, courtesy of the Xmage, which is a brand that replaces Leica for Huawei. And also, by the way, in the video, you have this tracking feature, which follows people around. And I've seen it on the Mate 40 Pro. We also have the special stabilization, steady shot. This is the photo area where you can also uh, use the AI to find proper scenarios and use these color profiles, bright, vivid, or original, also courtesy of Xmage. We got the portrait area with a bunch of effects, including studio lighting and the aperture where we can get the goods. So these are the virtual apertures from f0.95 to f16. And then we've got the physical apertures. There are four of them, f1.4, f2, f2.8, and f4. So these are the ones to play with. 
and they're fixed you cannot go between them you can go between them here in the virtual ones okay so i think that's about it uh, i should also probably give a shout out to the software we're running on here uh, i'm talking about emotion ui 13 a bit of a premiere applied on top of android 12 and we can see here several other features for the phone now the biggest and most important thing here there's actually two of them so we have new types of widgets and some of them can be stacked, which means overlapped, which was a rumor which appeared for the iOS 16 that you could uh, stack widgets on it. It's not available there, but it's available here. Aside from that, there's another cool feature. And for example, if you go here to the gallery and select a photo you like, like this one and keep it pressed. Well, not exactly here. You go here and do this. You can put it here. So this is basically, this is your super hub. It's basically sort of like a clipboard which lets you send stuff uh, to other devices so you can do this hop and with hop i can send them to a laptop i can send them to a tv set i can send them to a tablet or some other phone you can do that with a video for example send it to a tv you can do that to a song send it to your headphones that's the super hub which interconnects things and it's basically a way of completing the super device ecosystem which we had on the previous emui I'm sure you've also heard about the fact that there isn't a Play Store here, there aren't Google services, but we do have the Huawei uh, app gallery where there are a ton of apps in a ton of categories, something like uh, tens of thousands of apps available worldwide, something like 170,000. There's a lot of them. There's ride sharing, there's banking, there's entertainment, there's games, there's special offers and so much more. And I also relied on something called GSpace to install YouTube. I have the OG YouTube here, as you can see for yourself. I even logged in my premium account. And GSpace is placed uh, here. It basically simulates a virtual device with Google services and you can install these apps. That's only one of the solutions. Plus we have this thing called Petal Search and Petal Maps. Now Petal Search itself is a search engine which shows objectives around you and several other useful features. This is Petal Search. It can let you know that your flight is leaving, nearby restaurants, shopping things, useful information, recents, and your own profile. Okay, so that's about it. We'll be back with more in a full review pretty soon. This is it from jsnhome.com. This has been a presentation of the Huawei Mate 50 Pro, and I was able to install Chrome on it, not just uh, the YouTube application. That's it from us. Goodbye.